deluxe story experiences and games infused with teaching moments. Presenting for Cupcake Digital this morning is Brad Powers. Good morning. Uh, it's, most presentations start with people asking to turn their cell phones off. Um, I encourage you to all turn them on, uh, especially since we're in the application uh, business. Um, just kind of giving you a brief background. Um, I've been a serial entrepreneur. Uh, started off um, with um, founding a lead generation company that became the fourth largest in the country. Uh, sold that to Cavus. Um, also worked as an advisor and part of the founding team of Interclick that was sold to Yahoo for $270 million and was also part of the founding team for Aspen University, uh, which is an online education um, institution that's also public. Um, in terms of Cupcake Digital and what we specifically do, um, just in terms of um, pulling the audience really quickly, is how many of you have seen this? Uh, the proliferation of iPhones, iPads, um, tablet devices has been astounding. Uh, we seem to think that they've been part of our lives since forever. They really only have been around for four years. Um, and all one needs to do is look at, you know, go out to a restaurant, go out and uh, see just kids interacting with each other. Their main consumption device are these digital screens. Um, and what we've done is We've created a very unique offering in the sense that we will license that we license uh, major children's entertainment properties, and we transcreate them into deluxe apps, story experiences for the iPhone, iPad, all of your Kindle devices, all of your Android devices, and so on. Uh, the market size is two billion dollars and growing quite rapidly. Um, we have gotten to know our consumers extraordinarily well. Um, they represent about 22 million adults in the US right now. Um, and really part of the reason for being is that we live in such a busy world that a lot of the time the iPad, the iPhone, the Android device that we all carry around with is being used as a digital babysitter. That gives parents a tremendous amount of guilt. Um, and rather than playing Angry Birds, we feel that we offer a wonderful opportunity to not just entertain, um, but also to educate and to delight. Um, in terms of the growth, um, one only needs to look at Apple or Samsung or Microsoft's recent acquisition of Nokia and see that it is a tremendously uh, fast-paced and growing uh, industry. Um, in terms of what we do, um, we license, um, as I said, major brands um, that fit into kind of two different criteria, either that they are on air um, or they have a high degree of nostalgic value. Uh, we then have three different lanes that we put them in um, from an app perspective. One would be an enhanced storybook. The other would be imaginative play which takes traditional play patterns where you or I might have been playing with a Fisher-Price um, cash register. We can make that happen on the iPhone, iPad, et cetera. Uh, and the other is purely educational activities. Um, in terms of some of the features and benefits that we offer in all of our products, there's a tremendous amount of interactivity. Um, there's narration, there's full text, um, and um, highlighting capabilities. Uh, there is also teaching moments infused in each one of them, um, and we also have the ability to uh, simultaneously launch uh, English, Spanish, um, multiple languages um, for each one of the applications. Um, in the year since we've started, we've been able to amass uh, an ever-growing library of wonderful brands to work with. Uh, these are just some of the ones that we are, um, we've accumulated. Uh, our typical license lasts for three years. Um, and we also have, uh, very similar to kind of the music business, we have a perpetual sell-off period, meaning since we don't have physical goods, we can continue to build our library. Um, and once we have that in market, we can continue to sell it. 
Um, in terms of what makes us differentiated, um, we have the three-lane approach that I was kind of talking about before, where we have uh, storybook apps, we have imaginative play, we have education. Um, we try and develop rich, wholesome content that is makes the parents feel good about um, spending shared time or giving the children their iPads. Um, we have um, a proprietary engine that we've spent a tremendous amount of time and effort building that allows us to rapidly develop and take these great, rich, powerful brands and transform them into apps. Um, and we are 100% um, compliant with all the new COCA laws, um, which I don't know if you guys are familiar with, but they are quite daunting. Um, the other thing that we're able to do is because of our powerful um, engine, we're able to launch day and date across multiple platforms. In terms of the growth of the company, um, we have in one year gotten over 600,000 downloads and continue to grow exponentially. Um, and we've also gotten a tremendous amount of industry-wide recognition, uh, winning a ton of awards, and already have gotten national exposure um, on TV, etc. Um, competition uh, basically is Disney, which is they own their own world. Children Sullivan Children Workshop, again, their own world. And then there's two others, Toka Boca and Dr. Panda. They focus on their own characters. So they built their own original IP, where we took the position of saying, okay, we're not, we don't want to bet on a lottery ticket. We want to go out and license that IP and build upon the power of the brands um, that we license. Um, in terms of our technology, again, it's a proprietary system, highly scalable. It's object-oriented in design. Um, and we believe it creates a very strong barrier to entry to um, other folks and to anyone trying to enter into this particular um, genre. Um, key management, which I'm wrapping up on, uh, <laughs> we've uh, also established a great team surrounding us um, in terms of a uh, support system, Neil Friedman, former president of Mattel and Toys R Us, Paul Levitz, former uh, president of DC Comics, Ted Green, um, again, former president uh, and chairman of both Image Entertainment uh, and, um, and Anchor Bay. They've all been extremely helpful. Um, in terms of the funding history and strategy, um, prior to uh, kind of inception, I self-funded it. Uh, then in July, we raised um, 1.2 million. I led that with about $350,000. Then in winter, we raised about 1.4 million. I led that round again. Uh, we're currently seeking uh, four to six million dollars, 12, money, uh, 12 million dollar pre-money valuation, um, composed of an 80 cent uh, unit of common, 10% warrant coverage, 5% downward protection. Use of proceeds is to acquire more licenses marketing and uh, potentially acquire uh, some complementary companies that we can go in and leverage our technology to uh, be make them become immediately accretive. Numbers. Numbers, perfect. <laughs> um, so in terms of um, our financial information, our price points range any from, from 99 cents to 399. Um, we are expecting to turn um, EBITDA uh, profitable in 2014. What you'll see is a direct correlation between the number of properties and the number of apps. Um, and that direct benefit of uh, increase in sales and profita profitability. Um, and uh, you know, we are ramping up quite nicely and continue to do so. Questions. Paul, you want to describe your revenue model a little bit more? Sure. Um, <laughs> sure. Um, so the revenue model is a direct sales method. Um, you have already your distribution outlets predefined for you. So that's Apple, um, it's Amazon, Google Play, to a certain extent Nook, um, and you have specialty 
kind of channels like Toys R Us is just introducing <coughs> Catavia, which we're featured on. Um, you're playing in their sandbox, so they take 30% off the top. Um, so if you're selling something for a dollar, you're only getting 70 cents. Uh, the way that our licenses work is there's usually a minimum upfront guaranteed payment to the licensor that's 100% recoupable against royalties paid uh, to them from the sale of the app. That royalty is based on the 70% that's left over, um, and it typically ranges anywhere from 12.5% to as high as 25%, depending on the brand. Um, as the library continues to grow, and the more downloads you're able to get, it kind of builds a virtuous cycle. Um, so what you're able to do is send out push notifications, get people back into the app, then upsell, cross-sell, et cetera. Um, there's also potential, um, and we're currently in discussions with a couple of other major brands, um, to have a subscription-based model where kind of all you can eat very similar to Netflix um, on a reoccurring rate basis. Describe the output pretty well, but what is the input? I only understood brand or something that already exists in the marketplace. And then what does your engine do with that input? Sure. Um, and I appreciate that question. So one of the best ways to get an understanding for what we do is to actually take a test drive and look at our apps. Uh, we have a booth set up in the back, and also if you give us our business, uh, your business card, we're happy to send you the apps. Um, so as part of the license, uh, one gets kind of a whole treather trough of um, assets that's from um, everything from kind of style guides to full length episodes to scripts, turnarounds, etc. cetera. Um, what we actually will do is we will take that brand and then we'll transform that into either a digital book, uh, a learning game, or some sort of creative play. Um, so if you think about a TV episode, um, that would be 11 minutes in length, we can take that and make it into an 18-page book that is extraordinarily interactive and has learning activities in it for kids who are age two through seven. So would it be uh, accurate to say that your engine is a set of tools designed to take something that is a current story of some sort and make it more interactive? Uh, it takes the raw inputs and then transforms them into a um, digital medium. Sure. Um, so, yeah, everyone on the board is an investor. Um, in terms of a percentage, uh, I'd probably say roughly 20 to 30 percent uh, of uh, the board has, uh, you know, makes up the 2.6-ish million that was put in. Um, you know, again, as I said, I, I'm also the largest investor in the company as well. Okay. Last question. Do you have any... Uh data on the repeat customer? Uh, so. so one of the things that, um, it's an excellent question. Um, since we're dealing with kids, um, you're building off of an LTV model. Um, it is slightly tricky because you cannot use any uh, identifiable information. Um, so in terms of, we can track um, within an app how, if there was upsell or cross-sell occurred, but we can't identify that back to a specific customer um, because you're dealing with children. You can see where cross-sell is. Absolutely, yes, yeah. But, but, but we, uh, it's actually quite nice. Um, I and mean, when we, there, there, there's several different techniques, but um, in terms of upsell and cross-sell, um, roughly uh, 10 to 15% of the time we'll get an upsell or cross-sell from a push notification. Can't you tell if you have the same credit card number with the parent? No, 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 don't grab you're going through someone else's credit. Oh, so they won't give you that information. Uh, in other words, Apple, Google, Amazon, they hold it all to themselves. Sure. Okay, so you're, you're saying though that 10, 10 50% of when you do a push, you're getting uh, upsell. Correct. Or cross sell. Yes. But we don't know how many, what percentage of your in, in initial buyers are also buying again. The 
only way we can track that is if we send out a push, they come back to the app and they buy it through the app. Because you can't track it through the store because they're kids. Yeah. We're just out of time, guys. Okay.